Sakazuki debuted on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global on the 23rd of March 2017. This batch of characters brought more marine characters into the game along with a couple of unique and powerful abilities at the time. The characters in this batch included Onigumo, Swordsman of the Eight Sword Style, Momonga, Monster Slash of the Great Commander, Great Staff Officer Suru, Navy HQ Vice Admiral, Garp the Fist, Navy HQ Vice Admiral, as well as Kobe, student of the Hero of the Navy. The Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch continued the severe power jump following time skip Luffy, introducing a powerful captain effect that aimed to land strength slots to maintain high firepower. His special assisted his own captain effect, providing some slot manipulation and also being his crew's dedicated attack booster, allowing for more free team building moving forward. Introducing Sakazuki. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. So thank you for checking out another episode of the Legends of OPTC and in this video we are covering a very popular Sugo Fest exclusive character, Sakazuki. A lot of people love this guy when he first came out, was very good for a very good amount of time. Last week we talked about Time Skip Luffy and in that video I did briefly mention towards the end that, you know, Time Skip Luffy came out was considered the best legend in the game at that moment and then Sakazuki being the next character to debut. These two were considered the best legends for quite a long period of time uh, throughout the year of 2017. Towards the end of the year, things definitely changed and we'll get to that in a few weeks time. But let's talk about the brand new batch with Sakazuki. Let's start things off with Onigumo, who is going to be uh, an int slasher driven character. And his captain ability is going to reduce cooldowns by two at the start of the fight and then boost the attack of slasher and driven by 1.6. We've seen this with a couple of batches recently where they boost the attack of two classes by a small amount so if they've got both you get a 2.56 bonus not a very good captain ability but then the special randomizes recovery tandem and block slots we haven't seen too much block or manipulation and here we go also making strength decks and quick slots beneficial for driven and slasher characters for two turns is also incredibly good considering what we know about a kainu with strength slots this is really nice to make make them beneficial to your driven and slasher characters uh, on a nine turn cooldown is actually pretty good uh, this unit was was definitely used for a little bit for a while just because of the uh, the really good ore manipulation and beneficial slots because you know beneficial slots was not a common thing um, this is where they started to make their debut in the game and uh, Onigumi was a pretty decent rare recruit the next character is Momonga now Momonga definitely saw a lot of hype when this batch was releasing so Dex Cerebral Slasher with a captain ability of boosting Cerebral and Slasher by 2.5 10% damage reduction uh, if you have a strength Dex quick int and a Psy character on your crew so you did need one of each color which is kind of bad. Uh, I mean, obviously, this ain't Germa. Germa, obviously, are a, much, are, are a lot better for fulfilling that condition. Um, but yeah, not a good captain ability. But then the special would deal 15 times his attack and dex damage to all enemies and boost the attack against delayed enemies by 1.5 times for two turns. This was one of the first instances that we saw of a pretty decent conditional boost. Previous to this, there were a couple of conditional boosts that were like 1.2, 1.3, and some of them had really obscure conditions, like the enemy had to have an increased defense buff, like literally a blue shield for you to get the defense, uh, to get the conditional boost, was really weird. This is the first official conditional boost that was actively used. A 1.5 times boost for two turns if you delay the enemy. Um, delay was a lot easier to provide uh, against enemies back in the day. So of course, this was a really, really strong unit. 12 turn cooldown if you're able to max it out. An absolutely amazing rare recruit on release. So the next character is Suru, who is a quick cerebral shooter. And her captain ability would recover 1.5 times her recovery at the end of the turn. Every time you hit a good, recovers 0.1 times her recovery every time you hit a perfect. Basically a scuffed Corazon captain ability, nothing good 
good there. Um, resisting paralysis with a crewmate ability, and that's for the whole team, by the way. That's a very good crewmate ability. And then, obviously, limit breaking was later, getting access to that. But the special ability, 17 turn cooldown, is incredibly high. 10 hits of random quick damage and boosting the attack of all characters by 1.5. Again, basically a Sengoku special, rainbow 1.5 times attack boost, nothing crazy. The cooldown was so high that a lot of people just would never use this character at all, unfortunately. Um, if the cooldown was a lot lower, probably would have seen a bit of play. The next character is Garp, a strength powerhouse free spirit character with a captain ability of boosting strength and side by 2.5, actually usable back then, and a special with a, would go ahead and do 30 times his attack in fixed damage, fixed strength damage to all enemies, ignoring damage negating abilities and barriers. This is pretty cool. I, I mean, not, not a lot of uh, damage would actually bypass defensive effects back in 2017. So this is this was considered pretty good. Also providing a delay and then also reducing enemies defense by 80% for one turn. So of course you can use this in tandem with Momonga to get your delayed conditional boost. Pretty good. 17 turn cooldown is very high. Obviously after limit break got a lot more usable, but uh, not not an awful unit, saw a little bit of niche play here and there, the damage through barriers was probably the most important and the most usable component of Garp in, in its entirety. The last rare recruit of this batch before we talk about the legend is Kobe, Kobe being a Psy fighter driven, captain ability providing a 2.5 attack boost after the second perfect, 3.5 after the fifth perfect, not a good captain, special ability with multi-stage effects, now this is pretty cool though, so at the last stage if you're below 3000 HP, like not you know, a percentile, but literally 3,000 or lower removes the no healing debuff duration completely and recovers 13 times his recovery in HP. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe no healing, was that literally recovery bind back then? I don't know if they had recovery bind back then. I think it was recovery bind. I can't remember. I really can't remember what healing debuff this was, but this was like the only character at the time that could actually remove it. It was used in a couple of niche circumstances, but not overly used. And then of course, once support effects were active, he got a very good support effect that is still very useful to this day, but unfortunately Kobe wasn't the best rare recruit. There were a couple of good rare recruits in this batch, but it was a kind of mediocre batch, especially coming off of the Straw Hats, which almost all of them were really good. So now we can finally talk about the Sugo Fast exclusive, which is Sakazuki. Now he is a strength driven powerhouse character, driven powerhouse, we know all about that. His captain ability would boost the attack of all characters by 2.25. However, if the character had a strength slot, it would boost their attack by 3.9375 times instead. So I believe I believe it was like a 2.25 boost and if they had a strength slot it would be a 1.75 bonus which equates to this number here and then also boost the chances of strength slots appearing. This was a very powerful captain ability. The fact that you could passively get access to almost a four times multiplier for your whole team was very good. Now, of course, if you don't have that strength slot, you're only getting a 2.25 times boost, which is pretty weak. But of course, for your burst turns, if you build your team in a way where you're able to get as many strength slots as possible, yeah, this guy would just hit incredibly hard. And of course, boosting the chances of strength slots appearing, if you have double Akainu, it further increases those chances of them appearing. But of course, the issue with this captain is the fact that if you do get a strength slot and you're not building a strength team, they're not going to be beneficial to your team, which is why that Onigumo that we talked about a little earlier was very useful for Akainu specifically, being able to trade strength decks and quick slots is beneficial to fighter and driven, or slasher and driven should I say, very useful um, if you just build a driven based team and it means that if you have a dex unit like Raid Doflamingo or even Legend Doflamingo for an example, you can make his strength slot beneficial, meaning that he's going to have that four times multiplier with a matching slot and all of the other gimmicks along the way. Uh, very nice captain ability though. Unfortunately, no health boost or damage reduction or healing. So a bit of a squishy captain, but a powerful captain. Moving on though to his special ability, 18 turn cooldown, ridiculously high. 125 times his attack and typeless damage to all enemies, which is like one of the highest damage you could get from a special activation at the time. Randomizes non-strength slots and boosts the attack of characters with a 50 cost or higher by 1.75 times for two turns. So he was great. He was his crew's own attack booster. Of course, 50 cost or higher basically meant legends uh, and raid bosses. Those were the two characters at the time of his release. Those are the units that would actually get the buff. So again, like Raid Doflamingo, Legend Doflamingo, were great additions to Akainu teams, but like any raid boss, any um, any legend, any other legend that you had, definitely a more pay to win kind of unit, because if you had like some free to play units, they weren't ever 50 cost, of course not early days anyway, which meant that you were not getting the attack boost from himself, but 
the fact that he also provided a little bit of orb manipulation as well. He doesn't get rid of block slots though, which is a bit of a, of a downside there, but still a very powerful, powerful unit. Being able to get a four times boost with a 1.75 attack boost back in early 2017. What an absolute monster this guy was. And of course, once support effects became active, he has one of the best support effects in the game. And I think a lot of people would probably agree to that. It's such a good effect to have. So overall, Sakazuki was an extremely powerful unit for many months on One Piece Treasure Cruise uh, until probably late 2017 when we get to some other characters towards, you know, in the, in, the, in the future when we get a few episodes down the line. So let's see what kind of content we're going to be using this guy in today. So the three pieces of content that we are potentially going to challenge today are all Colosseums. We have Mark Weiss, Ideo, and as well as Shiryu. So I'm very interested to jump into one of these today. I really don't really mind which one we get today. I think all of them are going to be relatively tricky, but uh, it's going to be fun using Sakazuki when he was in his prime because I never really got access to the character until really later on. So I, I was never one of those people that could really use this character on release, but I'm excited to do that today. Let's spin the wheel and let's see what kind of content we are going to be playing today. A brand new Colosseum for the channel. Here we go. And we're taking on Colosseum Shiryu. Alright, I'm pretty pumped to take on Colosseum Shiryu. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the game and see what we can do. And now we've made it in-game with my man Sakazuki, an admiral from the Navy HQ. He has a stern sense of justice along with the strong will and drive to push it through. If he senses evil in someone, be it pirate or navy man, he destroys them all in order to eliminate any of their potential. Here we are with Akainu though. Strength, driven powerhouse, max sockets, no limit break of course. Max candy with 100 attack, 100 HP, max special level. We are good to go. Now as for the characters that we're bringing for this team, we have a pretty obscure team built here. We've got Legend Doflamingo on this team. We've also got the Colosseum of of Kid. He's going to be a really nice unit for a bit of orb manipulation. Kuma is going to be a huge addition to the team as well with some good orb manipulation as well and an orb boosting effect. And then at most for actually utility because, you know, utility wasn't really the focus of some of the older teams back then. But obviously now we know in today's day and age, if you don't have utility, you're not going to be beating any content. We are also using the Thousand Sunny ship and we actually want that to be ready. I think by stage four, we need to make sure that that is actually ready. So hopefully we can do enough store to get that to happen so man without further ado let's jump into some content with my man sakazuki so we got plenty of friend captains to choose from thank you very much to the lord shiro for providing his one his one is limit broken though and we got my girl carissa coming in unfortunately her one is not plus 100 attack and hp but we'll we'll, we'll make do uh, is it actually max special it is max special beautiful all right let's jump into it guys the final round versus shiryu of the rain it's time guys let's jump into it whoo Let's get it, let's get it! Here we go, final round versus Shiryu of the Rain, Battle 1. So, of course, we want to make sure that we are able to get the Thousand Sunny ship active. That is 15 turns of stall but before we reach that fourth stage. Um, also, the third stage has like three different variations, which they did like to do in older Colosseums. Um, there is one of the variations that I'm actually pretty scared of. Um, so two of the three I'm pretty comfortable with, but having a look at what the uh, one of the variations does, I think it's going to be pretty tricky if we get that one specific uh, variation. But saying that though, uh, we do have a turtle that we are able to stall on here, which should be kind of nice. Uh, let's do some damage here. We actually got a lot of strength slots here. What does this character actually do? Just a bit of damage. Wow, that is a lot of damage. We don't want that to happen. Uh, let's go ahead and focus down you. Get rid of you. A lot of strength slots, though. We love to see that. Remember, Akainu, as a captain, does increase the chances of strength slots appearing. Let's actually consume that recovery slot and kill these guys here. We don't want to take too much damage here. Now, hopefully, we're able to get a lot of turns of stall off here. So, we will attack with Doflamingo, I think, because the strength slots... Are actually, mm, if we don't have a strength slot, it is better to use those. I believe all the characters on this team are four combo hits, except for Atmos and um, Kuma. Those guys are not a four combo hit, so we don't really want to attack with those against the turtle. Okay, we get at least one more turn of stall here, which is pretty good. And we'll attack with Dofi. Okay, stage one was a success. We got uh, quite a lot of turns of stall there, which is great. Now, uh, once again, we'll just kill the guys with uh, the lowest cooldown. Um, uh, stage three, I think, may take us a few turns to get through, depending on which variation we get. So I think it's okay if we don't get like a crazy amount of turns of stall on this stage, but I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, let's kill the guys on a one-turn cooldown. Those guys are scary. 
And then we've got this character here. Remember to kill this female before she attacks, otherwise she's going to despair you. And we don't want to be despaired. That's going to be really, really bad. Uh, let's kill you. And we'll kill you. Now we do have a dex slot, which I am considering using right here on Dofi. Well, that, that's not going to kill. We can take a hit here. That's a lot of damage, yo! 8k? Bruh, that's like all of our health. Oh my god. Um, okay, we'll attack again. We at least get a couple turns of stall out of this. Auto healing's really good for a Kainu. I'll actually do a couple tap hits real quick just to see if we can get some better slots. And we'll move on to the next stage. Stage 3 is the variation... Okay, this is a good variation versus Bon Clay. Um, the one that we didn't want to get was the one with Mr. 3 because he he does, like, increased defense for, like, uh, like four or five turns or something. And it's pretty annoying to hit through increased defense. Okay, um, I think we want to take out the quick one first because we do have a lot of strength slots here So I think we actually can kind of do that at least we have the recovery slot so we can get a bit of recovery back Good damage there And we kill Bon Clay very good like Bon Clay was the best variation we could have possibly have gotten Unfortunately, a Kainu is not quite ready yet. Actually, is it okay if he's not ready? Um, it's actually by the time by the time we get to the last stage. I think that's actually okay. This should be fine. Okay, uh, Dofi had a strength slot there, I actually didn't even notice. Um, okay, so I'm thinking, yeah, this is actually okay. We're gonna go ahead and move on now to the last stage. Use up as many of these slots as we can. Boom. Okay, this is good. Stage four. This is going very, very well, guys. Very, very well. Now, one thing about this team is that Atmos, you use his special, he does really good utility, but... He actually does have double special activation. My one does have double special activation. So for the purpose of the series, I am not going to use the double special activation of um, of Atmos, okay? So we're going to go ahead and use the special of the ship first, which is going to do really good damage towards the enemy. And then we'll go ahead and use Atmos, which gets rid of Bind and Despair by three turns, but it also will do random strength damage, which will be really, really nice to get rid of these surrounding mob characters, hopefully. Okay, good, 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 good. Beautiful. So now we'll do like one turn of stall. We don't have really good matching slots here, so we need to make sure we can actually get some better slots. Okay. And then we'll attack with Kid. So the Binding Despair is now removed. A bit of damage coming in from Van Orga. Um, now we're going to go ahead and use the Akainu special. So Akainu, once again, will do really good damage towards the enemy will change any slots that are not strength randomly and also give our 50 cost or higher a 1.75 times attack boosting effect but it's for two turns which is great really good that we can have that um so let's go ahead and launch that which is going to do really good damage towards the enemy here cool special animation actually uh really bad slots though so that kind of sucks all right so we're going to use this so kid special does consume our slots but he gives us a full board of empty which obviously like kind of sucks but we can use that in partnership with the kuma special to give us a full board of matching slots which is exactly what we want boom Alright, so hopefully this is enough to kill. Of course, we don't have type advantage, but we have our 1.75 attack. We have our 1.75 orb boost. And let's hope that it gets some uh, some good damage. Alright, here we go. Nice! So with type disadvantage, we're able to still push through and just get that kill. The tap timing was a little choppy, but we got it. So now we're on the boss stage. So here is my man Shiryu. Now, I actually have no idea what he does. It all comes down to luck. Immunity, that's right. Um, but we also got Doc Q at the back. Now, Doc Q actually locks, target locks us. So we have to attack him first. But luckily for us, Akainu has a really cool special ability that does really good damage. So Akainu, once again, is going to give us the 1.75 times attack boost. He's going to KO all the mobs, or at least he should. Um, and hopefully we get a strength slot on on him and, and Dofi. Him and Dofi would be good. Kid would be good too. Uh, no, those are pretty bad slots, but I think we should actually make this work. Now, technically, because, um, you know, a kind of special, the way that it works is that it randomizes your slots. If you get really bad luck, you can just relaunch the game and launch the special again and get another re-randomization of your slots. Uh, for the purpose of the video, I don't think I'm going to do it, though, because Doflamingo special is pretty strong. Hopefully, it is enough to get the kill, though. Um, I don't know. It's going to be close. Doflamingo once again coming in clutch. Such a powerful, powerful legend character. 
So, uh, unfortunately, Doflamingo's slot is not counted as beneficial to himself. So he's still going to hit hard, but not as hard as some of the other characters here. And uh, hopefully, we can hopefully get close to killing. At least we kill Doc Q. Doc Q will definitely die. And we want to do as much damage towards Shiryu as we possibly can. So let's get it. Here we go. Okay, good damage, good damage. And we didn't really get amazing slots. I think we just die here. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I think we just die here. If we got another good strength slot, we would have probably been okay. Uh, I don't think we're killing. I don't think we're going to be able to kill. That really sucks. Okay, here we go. Oh, what is that? Bro. Uh oh, what does he do? Am I, I, I'm surely I'm dead. I have to be dead. Wait, we're not dead? <laughs> Bro, you can barely see his health. No shot. Yeah, like he had less than 10,000 health left. Oh my God. Bro, what a way to clear it up. What a way to clear that one up. Whew, all right, that was very risky, but we got the job done. Let's go, Sakazuki. Oh my god. As I said, like, if we had, like, at least one strength slot on the Akainu or the Kid, it was a wrap. We had it in the bag, but we got the job done at least. Thank god for that. Didn't want to redo that one. So with all of that, that is going to conclude this episode of The Legends of OPTC, with Sakazuki, of course. It was a lot of fun. And next week's video, now, I don't know how it's going to work, but next week... We're supposed to be covering Legend Buggy. Now, I don't really understand how we're going to get through that, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. So stay tuned for that. Legend Buggy is going to be on his way next week for the Legends of OPTC. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. And if you guys did, make sure to go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.